The first thing is that it is the most common blunt trauma organ associated injury. The important things that you should be knowing is the grading. Grading of splenic trauma is really very, very, very important. The first thing is that the grading is based on the laceration concept or maybe on the basis of the hematoma or the subcapsular hematomas basically. So when we talk about the grade, the grade one is hematoma, is hematoma less than 10 percent so a subcapsular hematoma less than 10 percent this is what is grade one or based on the laceration so any laceration with a depth of less than what students one centimeter so laceration one less than one centimeter grade two when we talk about it is 10 to 50 percent hematoma subcapsular hematoma i'm talking about so all these subcapsular hematomas are very 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 important or students the laceration one to what's three centimeter the third is the third is more than 50 percent subcapsular hematoma or 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 more than three centimeter laceration this is what is important so don't take subcapsular hematomas lightly in case of the spleen this is what is very important because subcapsular hematomas they have a tendency to expand so even a grade one level of subcapsular hematoma might convert into grade three if it is ignored then what is grade 4 students? Grade 4 is defined as more than 25% what students? Devascularization. Now more than 25% devascularization is very important. Why it is important? Because it is not possible with the subcapsular hematomas. It is only possible if the hilum has been injured. So this is corresponding to what injury? Hyler injury. This is what is very, 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 very important. The fifth the fifth thing that we need to understand is either there is complete devascularization of course students if it is asked in your mcqs what is hilum injury for renal trauma it's grade 5 for splenic trauma it's grade 4 and onwards so both 4 and 5 are true for the splenic trauma so complete devascularization or 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 a completely shattered devastated spleen so shattered spleen this is what is important so now we know the you can say the basic concept of the grading but the management is very 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 important and interesting whenever you have a splenic injury or a splenic trauma the very next thing that you need to understand is what is the status of this patient because if the status of this patient is unstable the very next thing that you need to understand is you can live without a spleen but you cannot live with a bleeding spleen and that is why splenectomy is a call here this is what is very 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 important when we talk about the stable patients what is the next call that we have to take about the stable patients for stable patients you will have to go for a CECT now this is what is very important tool for the abdomen so a stable patient will go for the CCT. Now on CT scan, what are the findings? They matter us a lot. Let us understand. On CT scan, if you get a subcapsular hematoma, do you know the problem with the subcapsular hematomas is a splenic subcapsular hematoma may be initially grade one and you might ignore laughing. Oh, it's very small. God bless you. You have been saved in this and that. And after two weeks, you see that the patient had a massive sudden splenic rupture with hypovolemic shock and patient died so remember when you know that this patient will die or this has a potential to what rupture so don't wait understand you can live without a spleen but you cannot live with a bleeding spleen this is what is important so in that case again you should be going for what students splenectomy this is what is very important and splenectomy is the easiest surgery to perform remember splenography is having no importance no significance only in pediatric you can say age group it is having some importance the second is suppose you went for the ct and you saw a pseudo aneurysm now the problem with the pseudo aneurysm is this is what is very simple and you can say uh, reliable problem that aneurysms happen to the arteries the hematoma in between the artery and the artery is always pulsating and that is why the knocking effect can cause perforation of the hyalur vessel main hyalur vessel so remember you can live without a spleen, but you cannot live with what a bleeding spleen. And therefore, 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 for them also, you'll go for surgery. And what is the surgery that you go for? Answer is splenectomy. However, 
the first line approach now this is where in some centers the first line approach can be NGO embolization now what is the significance of this NGO embolization try to understand this this is what is very important when we go for NGO embolization so this is suppose the vessel where the bleeding has happened so this is suppose the vessel lumen where the bleeding has happened of course understand for every bleeding there has to be a vasa vasorum as we have the vessels of the muscle that is vasa recta we have vasa vasorum also so this vasa vasorum is bleeding if we block this bleeding if if we block this vessel there could be a time buying procedure so this hematoma will not expand initially or if it is doing an expansion but it will be doing at a slower rate that is why nowadays angioembolization with an inter interventionist available is the first line thing that we prefer to go for the bleedings next is the third is so we have the third scenario as something which is known as contrast blush so what is the concept of contrast blush let us understand this is what is again very simple contrast blush is considered to be grade 4 now you are very angry that grade 4 is reserved for the higher injuries try to understand what is contrast blush it is controlled higher you can say controlled leak of you can say contrast so when you give the contrast IV contrast and you're doing the CDCT you see that small small dot of contrast is leaking from the marginal vessels of the hilum and this is what is very interesting also you know splenic artery or splenic vein they have the marginal vessels going into the you can say into the spleen so if uh, you can say if there is a minor leak of contrast minor leak of contrast from any of a single vessel this the patient will be hemodynamically stable so for them what is the call since it is belonging to the territory of hilum by default it will be grade 4 but remember the first line management the first line management for them will always be what students NGO embolization do you know nowadays it is preferred that this should also be taken as what the treatment of choice only if the facilities are not available then only you will go for what students splenectomy this is what is very 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 important and then if we talk about the injuries based upon their depth so if it is grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 lacerations grade 3 lacerations you can go for what conservative approach but if it is grade 4 and grade 5 injury in that case you will have to go for splenectomy so remember spleno raffi is not preferred over splenectomy it is the splenectomy which is far more preferred over what students spleno raffi the ideology behind this is more than 50 percent functional spleen should be there so if there is more than 50 percent functional spleen then only you can do a spleenography and the problem with the spleenography is most of the spleens get auto splenectomized or maybe a secondary hemorrhage in the abdomen that is why spleenectomy again spleenectomy is quite fast you can do spleenectomy in 15 20 minutes laparoscopic spleenectomy doesn't take a lot of time you need a proper positioning you need to mobilize the liver we have a purple or a white color stapler we fire it first we dissect the window we dissect the short gastrics make the spleen free then isolate the splenic hilum from the tail of the pancreas and take a white stapler and fire it or a purple stapler and fire it and boom there goes finished finish you can morselate the spleen but morselation is not long you can take it in an endo bag and either you can make a financial incision and deliver the spleen out or you can crush the spleen most of the time the spleen is so fragile in this case it gets crushed when taking out so make, make a 5 mm incision epigastric incision you can uh, you can extend it and take it out or financial incision for the other purpose remember one very important thing there is something which is known as OPSIs also so this is a uh, very important phenomena that we need to understand that post spinectomy vaccination should be there because there is overwhelming or opportunistic there are a lot of literatures which use the word opportunistic also so overwhelming post spinectomy uh, post spinectomy you can say infections and therefore the vaccinations are a mandate so this is what is very 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 important for elective cases for elective surgeries it should be two weeks prior and remember for emergency cases for emergency cases it is two weeks later exception to this is pneumococcal so remember pneumococcal is always given within two days so this is what is important pneumococcal within two days and hip and the other ones you can uh, give it after two weeks and this is what is very 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 important <laughs>